I'm moving on to conceptual questions, collisions and momentum conservation, again, with ChatGPT. Let's see uh, how it handles some of these questions. Uh, if it gives me an answer that talks about isolated system and whatnot, uh, I guess I'll be happy. Well, will I be happy? I, uh, I hate the phrasing isolated system, but I do know if there are some textbooks that use it, so I don't know if I can say that's wrong per se. Let's see, it says object uh, concern. Yeah, isolated, closed system. I, I just don't like that phrasing. The, I, I've seen this uh, phrasing in AP physics content. A colleague of mine was <laughs> asking some questions about that. I just uh, hate it. Um, because really, with the conservation of momentum, what matters is uh, one. Um, so let me do this. Uh, could you? define closed system. The, there is no consistent definition of closed system. Different authors will use different definitions for closed system. And um, so, yeah, it says closed system is a, a physical system that it does not exchange matter with its surroundings. So if that's a, its a definition of closed system, then a closed system can have its uh, total momentum change. Uh, example of that would be, well, uh, let's say uh, I have my cell phone here. Let me treat the cell phone as a system. And if I come in from the side and hit it and knock it out, knock it out, then the moment I hit it, there was no exchange of matter. There's no, um, yeah, there may have been exchange of energy, but in their definition of closed system, they are allowing for exchange of energy. So when I hit it, it's uh, no matter is being exchanged and its momentum is changing. So um, it by the definition it itself uses the whole thing about close the system conserving momentum. Uh, in this context, it's actually wrong because the definition of close the system that they are using in ChatGPT doesn't support uh, the assertion that in a closed system, defined this way, momentum is conserved. So I, I think this is really why I hate the phrasing closed or uh, open or isolated system. Uh, <laughs> instead of what I would focus on is this. Um, what I would focus on is not closed system, but instead look at impulse remembering impulse oops i can't spell impulse <laughs> impulse uh, which is defined as force times duration of time impulse due to external forces because that's what causes momentum of a system to change. Any internal forces you don't have to worry about because of Newton's third law, the impulse due to internal forces always balance out within the system. It's when outside objects are exerting force and that outside force from outside objects, external forces uh, impart impulse to the system. That's what causes the momentum to change. So, um, so that's what you should look at the phrasing like a closed system i i've seen physics textbooks where they use it and they use it carefully enough to use it correctly but because i've seen so many examples of it being used incorrectly i, I would my advice to you is don't use the phrasing closed or isolated system in physics context uh, mostly because it's uh, poorly defined. It's not consistently defined from one physicist to another physicist. It's a contrast to chemistry. I think in chemistry, they use these terms uh, enough that they use consistent definition, but in physics, not really. Um, instead, of go at the actual description of what leads to conservation of uh, energy, momentum, or whatever. So, okay, so I'm gonna agree that this has been wrong. <laughs> Uh, although it is the example right, uh, meaning that some of the the two that they are moving in up and momentum to uh, yeah, but um oh wait 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 yeah 
um, the part portion I was criticizing doesn't have anything to do with the total momentum of the system being zero. Now for the example, um, Uh, what this is um but okay so this itself is correct that uh, um, yeah if two objects in a system are moving in opposite directions with the same momentum then yes total momentum is zero and individual parts have momentum at least that's what the question is about all right um so the next question it says um describe uh yeah, let me copy that um so, so this question, I would still grade it as incorrect because it's a ChatGPT. One, it did have correct part, but it said so many other things that were wrong and irrelevant. So on the whole, it's wrong. <laughs> I mean, and you know, it's uh, because I, I don't have to be nice to ChatGPT. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, when someone kind of accidentally hits the correct answer by just uh, throwing everything at the wall and see what sticks, the whatever correct portion they get, it doesn't show any understanding. Um, and, you know, ChatGPT doesn't have any understanding of anything. Okay, so describe an example of a system. Momentum is conserved, but mechanically, okay. Um, any inelastic collision would work. Uh, Ah, and kinetic well, momentum is not. Here you have to be, um, I think thinking of the example here is a little bit harder. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, let's see. It's, um, uh, momentum is a ball bouncing on us. Oh, that's wrong, I think. So as the ball bounces on the surface, uh, momentum is not conserved. Because it's, uh, as, or I guess you can, the only way to get it to, um, where momentum is conserved, the, your surface has to be part of your system. So it has to be like system of the ball and the entire Earth. Uh, unless you specify that, then momentum is not conserved. So that's wrong example. Um, you can basically use any other a simple collision, inelastic or completely inelastic collision between two objects and involving no other big things. Um, an example of okay, momentum is now would be yeah, uh, you know what? I think I remember reading this as some one of the stunt answers. Uh, this is wrong also, because in this kind of elastic collision, momentum would be conserved, so it doesn't satisfy the criteria. In fact, um, this example, if they made a, a bouncing completely elastic, then it, this would have satisfied the, the requirement for the second example. Energy would be conserved, but each time it bounces, as long as you're looking at the ball as a system, it's not conserving momentum. So, so yeah, that's wrong. It's, uh, um, yeah, it's wrong. And let's see, example, uh, heavy ball, the collision. Uh, yeah, you don't know that unless, unless, without knowing the mass of the small ball. Like the, if the small ball has mass of what, five kilograms, I think it might work out to be that. But this is ChatGPT hallucinating. Um, or, you know, it's working from in, incomplete training text or it doesn't know what details actually matter because it doesn't actually know anything. <laughs> so, all right. Is it possible for the, uh, let me put that in. Um, Answers, I think, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> when this happens, uh, the, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Okay, so yes, it is possible. Interesting. By the momentum, yeah, conservation momentum. Yeah. Created then the exhaust velocity. Is that the, yeah. Uh, that's kind of missing the subtle point. Let me get back to that. Even though, uh, -uh. so there's a skip step that is skipped, like here, because it somehow get got to velocity of the gases is in the same direction as that of the rocket, probably from the question. <laughs> uh, the 
guesses don't have a much higher mass than the mark rocket unless they're not um they don't have to um yeah okay okay um yeah, so there's a kind of a chunk of the text that uh, just uh, wrong. So um, what it amounts to is when you consider the uh, system. So if you, so you can think of this like in calculus terms, you know, infinitesimal amount of mass in an infinitesimal duration of time. So imagine that a rocket is already moving at some speed, uh, for not. And uh, the rocket can continue to add to its speed by, um, by uh, ejecting propellant backward at its, uh, at its own reference frame, some speed with uh, T, free thrust. And um, because this portion would uh, only depend on the detail of the rocket design and how fast it's being pushed out, um, in um, throughout its uh, kind of acceleration process, uh, from starting from rest to some final speed, you can imagine this staying constant, which means um, so if you, which means as the rocket accelerates. Um, so uh, let me just plot it out for a kind of visualization. So if you're plotting the two speeds as a function of time, for example, and you have a, um, you have a velocity of thrust, um, and so that would be kind of constant throughout the whole motion. And if you have, uh, so let me imagine V is the speed of the rocket. So rocket is starting from uh, zero, uh, zero speed, and this thrust is giving some, let's say, constant-ish acceleration. So the speed of the rocket increases, 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 and as it reaches this point, this is the scenario that the question is asking you to consider. Does the rocket top out at this speed and it un is unable to accelerate faster than this threshold, or is it able to continue to accelerate beyond that? And the answer is yes, it is able to continue to accelerate beyond that. And you can look at it from two different perspectives. One is from a kind of reference frame of the rocket, where its speed is zero the whole time. Uh, or it would be like the momentarily co-moving frame. It would have to be at this moment in time, the reference frame where the rocket is at rest. And the moment later, rocket will have accelerated forward. So in that reference frame, the rocket has zero speed. So you are ejecting the material backward. So in that reference frame, of course, the rocket will accelerate forward. Nothing's like that, that, that. Nothing's hindering that. And if that kind of interaction happens fine in rocket's inertial frame. then uh, you, this interaction happens. And really all you need to do is to do a kind of a change of reference frame. The reference frame in which the rocket is moving with the speed of wind out. Then in that reference frame, when you do the shift of reference frame, what you do get is, okay, so the rocket is moving for the speed of wind out, and you have to do a velocity transformation to this. And when you are done doing the velocity transformation, what that will end up being is at this exact threshold, the uh, fuel they will be at v is equal to zero in the reference frame of the outside observer, and uh, this is perfectly fine. So what it is is the this fuel, um, the exhaust, um, and the rocket they had some overall momentum, and whenever this exhaust system is being left behind at a speed lower than this, the remaining parts has to have greater momentum going in this direction. So this velocity of the remaining part will increase. And that picture is valid even when this portion is slightly moving to the right. As long as however fast this is moving is a little bit less than this, the remaining part can gain momentum from whatever this is losing 
uh, with the, you know this direction being positive. So, so that's the explanation that what ChatGPT was claiming it is. Uh, so, so it was wrong. <laughs> it was wrong in its explanations. So, all right. So it got wow. It did it poorly. Uh, it so yeah. It did it poorly. It, I think all the questions they missed some important part. So all right, uh, that's good to know. Um, uh, you know, so you know, I'm interested in how much ChatGPT improves. So it's good for me to know that it it, it doesn't get uh, the collisions and momentum conservation questions well. Uh, when I try the GPT for next semester, it'll be interesting to see how well it does here.